This news program is proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and M Now Biscuits. Telecom Limited outlines potential to support SEZs. Consultation on new Non-Tax Revenue Administration Act. And Minister Duma confirms Air New Guinea's refleeting plan. A very good evening. This is National MTV News. I'm Godwin Eki. Thank you for joining us. The two-day Special Economic Zone Summit concluded yesterday, which saw hundreds, both national and international participants, participate in this summit. Telecom Limited CEO Amos Tepe gave a detailed highlight on the potential plans and services that Telecom has in place, which will complement the SEZ plans. Telecom Limited Chief Executive Officer Amos Tepe highlighted that for special economic zones to progress, there must be a conducive environment for enablers, and Telecom has the potential, plans, and capacity to support SEZs in the country. We provide the service of mobile, Wi-Fi, VSAT, PABX, user system, and communication on landline, data center, and also we provide IPTV. And not only that, but we also has been given certification on ISO 9001 2015. And we are now pushing to get ISO 9001. Telecom's five-year plan complements the SEZ plans which are in place. CEO Tepi highlighted that Telecom's plans are aligned with the government's Vision 2050 and 2030 plans and are sanctioned by the National Executive Council. Telecom's five-year network master plan to capture the full complements of the SEZ plans. Uh, Telecom has got vertical business solution, as I mentioned earlier on. We got multimedia, print directory, and ICT. And that supports the plan. Telecom, we are ready to partner with SEZ to deliver the full set of solutions. Mr. Tepe went on to outline some SEZ enablers of which Telecom Limited has the potential to support. SEZ to Jones has been government plans. It's all been covered in our plan. That's five years, our uh, corporate plan, um, network master plan. Uh, beg your pardon. Also, in our three-year corporate plan as well, they're part of the plan. So you can see uh, communication solution for us to cover those SEZ uh, are covered in our network master plan and also three-year corporate plan. Telecom has signed a memorandum of agreement with the Paga Hill development, which is identified as one of the SEZ sites. Also, Telecom... I want to make it clear that we also signed our partnership or MOU with Paga Hill Development. Exclusively, we have done that agreement and we've given right for Paga Hill Development to pro progress. Provisions of internet, telephony voice, data services in SEJ and actually to Indonesia partners, also Telecom is there to provide them. Mr. Tepi reassured participants of the summit that Telecom has the potential and capacity to support special economic zones in the country. Florence John Duo, National MTV News. All government statutory bodies and authorities will now be required to remit all revenue they collect to the government purse into a consolidated revenue fund. This was revealed by Secretary for Finance Ken Nangan during the implementation of the new Non-Tax Revenue Administration Act, which was passed in Parliament in 2022. 
It was held at the Department of Finance and Treasury Implementation Workshop held this morning at the APEC House in Port Mosby that the country only relies on tax revenues collected by IRC. However, we have sufficient non-tax revenue that is being generated by government entities but kept for their own functions. Secretary for Finance Ken Ngangan explained that there have been a lot of entities that have been created by an act of parliament to perform certain regulatory functions on behalf of the state. In performing those regulatory functions, they collect revenues which are public monies. Secretary Ngangan further elaborates. The act requires that uh, all state statutory authorities and statutory bodies collecting revenue on behalf of the state. The law now requires that all the uh, revenues collected are now uh, uh, remitted into the uh, Consolidated Revenue Fund. When all these public funds get into the Consolidated Revenue Fund, the national priority programs are determined through the national budget process. Secretary Ngangan elaborated further on the importance of this Non-Tax Revenue Administration Act workshop. The, the workshops about correcting and uh, fixing a system weakness or loophole that allowed uh, statutory bodies and public bodies to be collecting monies and using that on their own. Now, the Act now requires that all the monies, we recognize that they are now public monies. Secretary Ngangan added that the Departments of Finance and Treasury are now clarifying to the heads of statutory bodies and organizations on how to access funds because from now on, the funds will no longer be kept by them. Funds will be kept under the Consolidated Revenue Fund or the Government Purse at Waigani. When asked how this new Non-Tax Revenue Administration Act will benefit ordinary Papua New Guineans, this was Secretary Ken Ngangan's response. The benefit of local Papua New Guineans is that we will have more monies now available. Monies that have been kept outside of the budget process will now be brought into the, uh, the public scrutiny and it will be used to fund, uh, fund the national budget. So which means that uh, in terms of health services, education services, all the government programs, we we'll now have uh, more, uh, more money which, have been no, which are no longer available. Lindy Suharupa, National MTV News. State Enterprises Minister William Duma revealed that the appointment of SOE heads will be done transparently and diligently with no political interference to allow all the SOEs to strive and achieve good results for the benefit of the country. Comments have been circulating on social media, slamming the performance of some of the SOEs in the country. Minister responsible for state enterprises, William Duma, said they are looking at approaches to uplift the performance of the SOEs in the country. Minister Duma revealed that the appointment of the SOEs heads will be done diligently without political interference. Under the SOE, uh, the ADB led reform package, uh, the KCH, uh, the Kumul uh, Control uh, uh, Authorization Act was changed in such a way that this time around, when it comes to the appointment of directors of our various SOE boards and CEO, CEOs, you, you, you get them appointed to a rigorous, uh, independent and a transparent process where independent recruitment consultants are engaged by KCH, all the positions which are vacant are for, which are for grab are uh, advertised. Minister Duma added that when appointments are made on merits with due diligence, the outcome are pleasing. We realize that the only way to go up is to do the right thing, and that is to stay away from politics, interference and all that, and allow the companies to run. You know. But that does not necessarily mean that um, we will allow SOEs to be run down. Duma also highlighted that things are starting to look good in the SOE space as reports on allegations have been thoroughly investigated. Uh, those who feel that they have got uh, things to report, they do that independently. I have no idea who's in there. It's run by KCH and they, they make sure that allegations uh, 
depending on uh, also the practice they investigated thoroughly within the SOE. So things are slowly beginning to, to change. Minister Duma added that he is working to ensure SOEs adapt to the characteristics of good and well-run private companies. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. Minister for State Enterprises announced that the SOE in New Guinea has been working on a refleeting plan which will be presented to the Cabinet for financial approval. According to the State Enterprises Minister William Duma, Foka 100s and 70s are aging and need a replacement. Uh, they need replacement, especially Foka 70s and 100s. Uh, production of those planes stopped many years ago, I think 2017, 2019 or 2008, I can't remember the exact year, but many years ago. So uh, they've gone past the use by date. So um, and has been working on a refleeting plan. Duma also revealed that Air New Guinea is looking at leasing some of the Foka 170s to service smaller centers within the country. Boeing, of course, as you know, we've got the, the big Boeing servicing some of the routes now. We're looking at leasing some and even acquiring some more. Uh, there's a toss up with an Embraer of Brazil and uh, Airbus uh, to replace the narrow bodied uh, planes like the uh, F 70s and F 100s. Um, and also, uh, we're looking at purchasing or leasing some to uh, service uh, the smaller centers, the turbo prop planes. So, um, Eventually, when cabinet gives us the uh, gives any guinea the approval, any guinea will then make a decision whether to go for Embraer or Airbus. Minister Duma further stated that with the refleeting planned citizens will see a reduction in the ticket prices. In the meantime, the managing director for Kumul Consolidated Holdings, Professor David Kavanamur, commended the Air New Guinea Engineering Department for their tremendous efforts in ensuring the safety of all passengers traveling on Air New Guinea over the years is always a number one priority. Compliment all our Papua New Guinea, all Papua New Guinea team in the engineering uh, department. They make sure that they keep our planes uh, flying. Uh, they also are mindful of the fact that their own uh, family members fly on the same planes, their relatives on the same plane. Mm -hmm. And so they take it personally and uh, upon themselves and professionally just to make sure that safety uh, is uh, assured uh, across, across the, the board. So. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. The Civil Aviation and Safety Authority of PNG has duly recognized and approved the first in-country flight training organization. The Akatek Aviation College is and will be the first in the country to offer commercial pilot with instrument rating costs. This was announced today by the Akatek Aviation College President Jonathan Palma in Port Moresby. Over the years, many of the grade 12 school leavers have shown interest in piloting courses and have taken the initiative to acquire the pilot training courses overseas. Today, we witness the Akatek Aviation College taking a lead to change that by being the first in the country to offer the country's first in-country flight training, approved by CASA PNG, as announced by the college president. Uh, we are very proud to be given the opportunity uh, by the country to first to do business here in uh, Papua New Guinea at the same time. Uh, we are very proud because CASA uh, gives us the certificate to operate, not only as an aircraft maintenance engineering school, but also a flight school, and this is the first in the country. So we are very honored to be part of this uh, opportunity. President Palma highlighted that safety is of paramount importance, thus they will ensure that students are well familiar with PNG airspace, terrains and airstrips will have the confidence to fly in PNG's air, airspace. So that's the advantage. 
So for those who are considering of going to other countries to take pilot training, I would like to invite all of you to try Akatech Aviation College, the first and only uh, flight school and aviation school in uh, Papua New Guinea. He further added that their instructors are highly trained and qualified and possesses more than 2,000 instructing hours with the current PNG commercial pilot license. Currently, 10 students are undergoing the pilot training at the college. Mr. Palma added that once qualified, all architects, commercial pilot with instrument rating courses graduates may be given a chance to work with the flight instructor or be part of the junior charter pilots for their soon-to-open charter company. We are in the process of applying for our air operator certificate. Um, graduates from our flying, flight school will be given the opportunity to work with us as a flight instructor or uh, air charter pilot. While gaining those experience, gaining hours, then they will have the opportunity to work with other aviation companies locally and maybe in the future uh, internationally. Uh, the advantage of having a flight school here in Papua New Guinea is the students or applicants has the confidence in flying in their own airspace because Papua New Guinea is different from other uh, countries. The Akatech Aviation College was also recognized by the Department of Higher Education Research, Science and Technology and will be included in the TESA's program commencing next year. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. Start your day the smart way with the new Smart Start Breakfast Biscuit. Whether you are busy or on a budget, Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits gives you a healthy and affordable breakfast to set you up for school or play. Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits are fortified with essential vitamins for body or brain health. They contain vitamin A for healthy growth and development, vitamin B6 for healthy metabolism, immune system and brain development, and vitamin B12 for nerve and cell health. Proudly made by Paradise Foods. Hi, I'm Chef Jules Hennell, and this is where my true inspiration for cooking started. Like most of us, I learned to cook from my mom. Nothing beats simple recipes where fresh local produce is at the heart, especially when it's a home-cooked meal, prepared and shared with the ones you love. And in PNG, no meal is complete without rice. And my choice is always True Guy. True Guy, true inspiration through generations. Telecom PNG Limited will be hosting the 27th Pacific Islands Telecommunications Association AGM and Business Expo Forum on Monday 29th May 2023 to test day 1st June 2023 at the Hilton Hotel Port Mosby. Theme, reimagining service excellence, ubiquity and resilience in the post-COVID Pacifica. Since the COVID outbreak which closed borders around the world, the forum will focus on strengthening ties between our regional partners in the light of ongoing technological advancement in telecommunications and accelerating progress growth in island countries. Join us and be part of the 27th Pacific Islands Telecommunications Association AGM and Business Expo Forum. Call our event team now to secure your sponsorship package on 3004010 or email events at telecom.com.pg for more information. Vocal Fusion Season 10, the audition tour begins. Lay City, get ready. We get to kick off the audition tour in your city on Saturday, 27th May. Mount Hagen on Saturday, 3rd June. Kokopo on Saturday, 10th June. 
Alatau on Saturday 17 June and the ending audition tour in Port Moresby on Saturday 24th and Sunday 25th June. MTV's Vocal Fusion Season 10, the audition tour. Warm up those vocals and be ready to make your way to one of the audition centers and try out for place in the competition. See you there. is the Strike Force, and these are their stories. Eight PM tonight, right here on your number one to watch, MTV. You're watching National MTV News. Today, the Waigani National Court dismissed the court case, a petition filed against Southern Highlands Governor William Poey, where petitioner Augustine Rapa was not present, but the court withdrew the case based on consent from Augustine Rapa. Speaking outside the courthouse was satisfied and happy Southern Highlands Governor William Poey. On his way out from the Waigani National Courtroom, Governor William Poey was pleased with the decision for the withdrawal of the case. I uh, to thank you for your presence, for your supporters, for your witness on this occasion, for court long today, where one of petitioner, uh, Augustine Rapa, for Kagua, by consent, by consent meaning of M yet, Willingly, Amy talk us me redraw him this election petition case. Following a media conference this afternoon, Governor Poe made an appeal to the people of Southern Highlands to put their differences aside and work as one for the betterment of the province. That leaves me with only one um, this election petition belong. Me being a triple election petition, but two redraw by consent now remains with uh, Peter Nupiri's election petition. So that one and Bami Blong go through long. Normal process now, go to court to deal with this. Governor Poe said there were three petitions filed against him and so far two have been withdrawn by the petitioners and one is still pending. Realize what had happened in Southern Highlands. God knows, the people knows, and me blow leaders, me blow look in this plan. It probably comes too late after all the houses are banned, or after all the innocent people have been divided, and after all the destruction. But I think uh, what we have seen today is going to be the end of all this destruction, election-related violence, and in the future, people also recommend that we do not do counting in Mendy again. Mr. Poe highlighted the many issues the province has been faced with over the last 15 years due to various factors such as election-related violence and tribal fights. But for them to humble themselves and come here and give them support, provide them stability, that's a big call. I want Southern Highlanders to take heed of this. And I am now preparing my province to empower them more man. Now Mary, all, uh, all man Mary, so that all he realize him, the potential they have in themselves. So what you really qualify by development? Development is providing opportunity for someone to realize the full potential in life. He's calling on the people of Southern Highlands and their leaders to come together and work side by side so that not only peace can be restored, but allow the government to carry out its work to develop the province and the people to respect the law and put their differences aside. Chimbu Provincial Government last night during the closing of the summit presented a cheque of 1 million kina to the Department of International Trade and Investment. According to Chimbu Governor, the 1 million kina cheque submitted to the Minister Richard Maru will go towards feasibility studies in the Karamoy area. 
Having shown a keen interest in the development of special economic zones following the closing ceremony, an area in the Chimbu province recognized as an economic hub by the provincial government, both the governor of the province, Noah Kool, and member for Salt Nomane, James Nomane, surrounded by students from the province dressed in their traditional attire, donated a check to the Department of International Trade and Investment. <laughs> It's a personal call about emancipating our people, bringing them opportunity, uh, allowing them to travel on the roads and visit, access uh, health and education facilities in other parts. It's about equity. And you answer that call, and I, I salute uh, the Prime Minister for delegating uh, the, the responsibility of this special ministry to you uh, because it's only men of heart and men with passion that can do uh, what you're doing. He added that the one million kina presented to the department will go into doing a feasibility study in Karamoy, which is known for its various agricultural products such as cocoa, coffee, vanilla and other cash crops. So it's about Simbu's not being beggars anymore. And we can't see any other way except the SEZ agenda. So, Minister, if you could kindly come up and uh, receive our contribution towards the feasibility study. We've got a check here uh, for a million kina. Speaking on behalf of the province and the many business opportunities there are, Governor Noah Kool, who was not only impressed on the discussions during the SEZ summit, he is convinced that SEZs in the country is the way forward and supporting the international trade and investment to do feasibility studies at Karamui is important. What we plan to do is uh, we want to showcase our Karamui jet. We want to make it special, so we committed uh, one million kina, committed one million kina for this special occasion. He further encouraged business houses and investors that were present on the night to visit Karamui and look into partnering with local businesses and the provincial government. We've got cocos there, we've got uh, vanillas there, we've got coffee beans there, we've got rice there, whatever you name it. The place is uh, full of all these things. What we want to see is we must translate this to cash. Both the governor and the member presented the check to the minister responsible for SEZs, Richard Maru. The Medang provincial government has made an appeal to the national government to accept the special economic zone proposal today in Port Moresby. This proposal concerns the entry-exit draft policy for investors to abide by when they plan on implementing their projects in the province. Medang province holds full economic potential with its vast resources like land, agriculture and marine resources which provides the hub for local and international contractors to operate in. However, it is claimed that in recent years, due to past reforms, no economic benefit sharing has been given to the local population, especially the rightful landowners and the provincial government. With the Special Economic Zone Summit held this week, provinces have come on board to present their plans for better implementation by the Special Economic Zone Authority and the national government to consider and approve. Today, Medang has made a call that their draft plan on Medang's Special Economic Zone contains an entry-exit proposal for which investors will abide by before setting negotiations with the provincial government and the locals. All in all, all in this, we, we have, through this experience, we have seen that uh, there is no proper trail of how the benefit that goes in and out. And many times, our local, especially our local so the sub sub national level have missed out. So what we are trying to present here, which my director planning will present, is that it's an entry and exit policy. We want to, as a as a policy, we want this to be dealt with as a policy, so we can see how investors come into our province and how they partner with the locals. So there is a local and 
international partnership. The provincial government has taken a step forward to provide transparency so that they do not repeat mistakes that have been set in the past. SHS is just one part of the kind of activity, but we have other donors and other NGOs, uh, other projects, that economic projects that might come in. We want them to also follow the same guidelines. So there must be a win-win situation. Local participation is the paramount agenda that the provincial government is going to address. They believe that this proposal will set the par for economic benefit for the future of the people of Medang. So we, we created this, uh, I mean, we're trying to propose this uh, entry and exit policy, uh, which will be a guideline that will uh, protect our resources uh, and then will uh, help our people uh, to you know, benefit on that. A local landowner of the Transgogol area, Maurice Bunn, highlighted issues done in the past by investors and the government. The policy government system, and it goes straight, seeing somebody out there, they know, which is not a landowner or something out there, but he's from that province out there, getting money from the province, how the import must be, elsewhere, sign, and then things go down there. When we don't have to down there, they start use our own policemen, our army, to come and you know, put the fight against us to, just to let this thing go upon their own interest. Grace Papiali, National MTV News. The successful hosting of the Special Economic Zone Summit by the Department of International Trade and Investment under the leadership of Minister Richard Maru saw the two days event come to an end last night at the Stanley Hotel. Minister Maru, upon thanking both the international delegates and delegates from around the country, together with sponsors and international investors, extended a word of gratitude to the Maraperoso government for supporting the event before finally announcing the 2023 SEZ summit closed. The 2023 summit of the Special Economic Zone, which started on Sunday, witnessed the diplomatic call, parliament members, investors from around the world and other important delegates attend a two-day summit where various SEZ issues were raised and discussed. Representatives from various countries spoke on the types of SEZs, the benefits of SEZs and the criteria used when identifying a special economic zone and how a province or a district could qualify to be able to be classed as an SEZ. Also, over the two-day summit, investors were also given an opportunity to share their experiences and the type of investments they are looking for and what makes a good investment. Also discussed were issues on land matters such as government and customary land rights, landowner benefits, criteria of how an SEZ can be identified, and requirements were also placed under the spotlight during the summit, including Q&As from the delegates. Minister Richard Maru officially closed the summit last night and extended a word of appreciation and gratitude to those involved in making this summit a successful one. To the districts and to our provinces, we have done the job my department and myself and all our sponsors and our government. You have to now take it back and organize yourselves. As we bring this meeting to a close, this summit is the start of a journey and the journey will start now. We will bring the best because we want our legislative authority to be the best. We don't have time to waste and we are competing with the rest of the world so we've got to be smart. We've got to perform to world class standards. My department wants to form a relationship with you. Our country wants to form a relationship with Indonesia, with Bangladesh, with the Philippines, with China. We need your expertise, we need investors from your country, and we need to partner. Following the closing of the summit, successful discussions will continue and feasibility surveys will be formalized. A group of enthusiastic women in Panguna in central Bougainville are now in a small yet successful business initiative of soap making. They produce up to 200 soap bars per production and are looking at expanding their production soon.
These are some of the organic soap products that have been produced locally by the women of Panguna. Speaking via telephone from Panguna this afternoon, Tionila Roka Matbob said production started to increase from 20 to 200 soap bars, with customers now ordering from as far as Australia and other overseas countries. So we started bringing out this gift, like we started going into gift soap, not to sell, but to sell, give it to our network, both in the country and overseas as well. So that was what we did. We started sending the soap as far as Australia and even some of our friends that were coming in from other parts of the world. We had to give like the US, all of this. So we got just give him law. All right, so he means law, you know, what would be the benefit of coconut oil specifically? So that was the from then now and what some time old man Mary started building trust now and they started telling us, Can you export to Australia and all of this? So, you know, when my husband is traveling out, people are asking, can he bring that soap? Also, we do coconut soap. We do um, aloe vera soap. We do um, lemon. But what we're doing right now is we're just concentrating on one product. As we give time to our mothers everywhere in the constituency to start planting aloe vera in, like, in a farm. According to the local member for Euro constituency in Panguna Central, Bougainville, the soap production started mid last year with an initial startup capital of 1,000 kina. Almost a year now, and many women have left the soap production activity and have gone to do their own things. However, a faithful widow, affectionately known as Mama Elizabeth, remained to continue producing soap. According to Mrs. Matbob, the soap program grew value to just over 4,000 kina, and Mama Elizabeth recently received 1,000 kina out of the soap production in which she used to buy roofing iron for her home. Currently, they are using Mrs. Matbob's family's what was supposed to be a poultry shed for the production of soap. Interested customers can get in touch with Theonila Matbob on Facebook. Lindy Suharupa, National MTV News. And now looking at the Nest Fund market report, the Kina closed unchanged at 0.2840 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0.2755 US dollars, 0.4042 Australian dollars, 0.2436 Euro, 36.81 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York closed, gold is trading lower, coffee closed higher, cocoa closed higher, copra closed higher, palm oil closed lower, crude oil is trading lower, copper closed higher. On the stock market, the Dow Jones closed lower, the ASX 200 is trading lower, and the All Ordinaries is trading lower. National MTV News continues after the break with more stories. Stay with us. Share the love with Gala Ice Cream, Gala Cone Ice Creams, Gala Stick Ice Creams, and Gala Classic Tub Ice Creams. Happiness begins with the Gala Range of Fun Play. Dear son, you ask me how I live such a good life. Yes, I've had some good luck, like the day I met your mother. But it wasn't always that way. I've made some good choices too, like working hard and keeping my super with Nasfan. They looked after it for me, which meant I could concentrate on looking after my family. Living each day, knowing that when the time came, I'd be ready. Immunization is the best way we can protect kids from dangerous diseases like missiles, rubella, and polio. You see, immunization shields kids so they don't get sick. And when all kids are immunized, it works even better. So when you get your child vaccinated, you are also helping protect everyone. Every child in PNG deserves to grow up healthy. Visit your local clinic today. Immunization. Happy, 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 happy Mama's Yay! Want a home-making bargain for mom? Head to Brian Bell Home Centers for Mama's Yay deals on PNG's largest range of small appliances. House Appliances has the complete range for your home. Made exclusively for Brian Bell Home Centers, house offers European style at value price, backed by the famous Brian Bell warranty. Mom say, 
Day Bargains at the Brineville Home Centers Nationwide. The 30th Australia Papua New Guinea Business Farm and Trade Expo will be held in Port Moresby, Papua New Guinea from Monday 15th to Wednesday 17th May this year. Held annually, this major bilateral business farm is essential for anyone doing business between Australia and PNG. Join us in Port Moresby. Visit www.bcpng.org.pg or call the Business Council of PNG on 323-8465 or the Australia Papua New Guinea Business Council on 323-7383 for more information. Coming up on Sportsing this Thursday is National Weightlifting Coach Paul Kofa, as well as Papua New Guinea Orchids and Parramatta Eels forward Elsie Albert. Yes, it's, it's pretty exciting for me to you know to finally get to sign multi multi year contracts. Hi, I'm Elsie Albert, and you're watching Sportsing on your number one to watch MTV. I'm Liz Hayes. I'm Tom Steinfeld. I'm Tara Brown. I'm Liam Bartlett. I'm Sarah Arbo. And this is 60 Minutes. Fighting the American occupation. Strategic threat and time. You know, nobody wants to be in a conflict zone. A brother and sister, a father and daughter. 60 Minutes, 9.30pm on Sundays. Right here on your number one to watch, MTV. You're watching National MTV News. Owner of local rice company Rigo Rice inspired the attendees and guests who turned up for the Special Economic Zone Summit by giving an overview of how local companies can invest in downstream processing of resources, provide job opportunities and generate revenue which will help boost the country's economy. Local rice company Rigo Rice has been operating for the past years in the central province. Owner Jeffrey Kennedy gave an overview of how the company has operated its first harvest in 2018 with the production of 600 tons of rice sold to Gulf and central provinces, including Port Mosby. The company has acquired more than 12 million kina in farming and milling machinery this year to boost production. Kennedy stressed that local farming provides employment for locals and that has been the core agenda of his company and for our trials we have trialed more than 20 different varieties from the Philippines from China from Indonesia from Taiwan and some from Australia and I'm pleased to say that where those seeds come from they say your yield is probably six ton eight ton in river rice we have superseded those yields we have gotten more after nearly five years of trial Rigo Rice has decided to move forward and expand into commercial farming. It is, it is time. <laughs> he emphasized that PNG spends more than 600 million kina in importing rice and appealed to locals to venture into rice farming. He said that for Rigo Rice, there has been challenges in place. And after several attempts, they have transformed. If we can plant rice in PNG to meet our own demand. That money stays in PNG, creates more employment and grows our economy. Grace Papiali, National MTV News. Building permanent houses for locals in the Community Mine Continuation Agreement or CMCA region in Western Province remains a significant expense for families. To address this issue, the people of Miamrai village situated in White Tree Trust region access their village development funds and built four houses recently. Myanmar villagers celebrated the handover of the first four completed houses. CMCA Trust Administrator Johannes Safarius said completion of the first four homes in the village is a significant milestone in the region's development. He said success of this project highlights the potential for collaborate efforts to drive change and foster sustainable development for people. The village leaders expressed gratitude and thanked Octedi Development Foundation for their continued support in helping the villages in CMCA region. White Tree Trust Semen Gren Somoy 
also thanked the company for its logistics support and movement of materials. What the needs of the people, expectation, was to happen this way, so it started happening. There is no other needs that they can start with foundation. The foundation of the status on ground is housed. One of the homeowners, Tumba Warren, said the home would provide shelter and security for her family in the coming years. To, the, to my leaders in the village, my DPC and community plus OTDF, the entity which has been very grateful to our family house. So we are very pleased and happy that we will be living in this new house. Trust Administrator Johannes Safirios acknowledge the local carpenter Jimmy Idwenai and his team for their hard work in completing the houses. Speaking at the opening ceremony, the administrator furthermore announced Octedi Power donated solar panels and saw in all 10 houses would have off-grid power and water catchment tanks for fresh water by the end of the project. Executive Manager of Program Services Eric Kuman stated that OTDF is committed to supporting project delivery. Courage means now people are looking light, people are looking material work no movie. You want to have a car work and want to have a material not to allow you to finish life. And for legacy projects. Its house contains three bedrooms built to specifications, water tanks and installed solar lightings. The construction work for the remaining six homes in Myamrai village will continue and are expected to be completed before the end of this year. Jim John, National MTV News. Moving to overseas news now, Israeli airstrikes have killed at least 15 people in Gaza, including 10 civilians. Israel says its offense in Gaza have targeted senior members of the Palestinian militant group. This Israeli offensive is the deadliest military operation seen in Gaza in nearly a year. More than 40 military jets took part in what Israel has labelled pinpoint strikes, targeting senior members of the Palestinian militant group Islamic Jihad that they claim have been responsible for attacks on Israel. Several homes were hit in the airstrikes along with weapons manufacturing sites. Gazan health officials say at least three senior commanders of Islamic Jihad were killed, along with at least 10 civilians, including a number of children. The Israeli military says it is looking into reports of civilian deaths, in its words, collateral, but it's provided no immediate comment, and the UN has condemned the killing of innocent Palestinians. Islamic Jihad has promised there will be retaliation. The important thing is that the decision to respond has been taken. There will be a unified Palestinian response to this crime that has targeted all of the Palestinian people. We are in the middle of a campaign and we are prepared for any possibility. I advise our enemy, do not mess with us. Roads and highways have been closed. Schools in the area are also closed for the next 24 hours. Military reservists are being put on standby and Israel has readied its missile defence system, the Iron Dome. It's likely this situation could escalate into a major multi-day campaign between the two sides. Former Pakistan Prime Minister has been arrested at a court in Islamabad. The arrest has led to clashes between his supporters and police. Imran Khan was facing court in Islamabad in Pakistan's capital over a corruption case. It's one of dozens of charges against him at the moment. And in footage you can see him being surrounded by paramilitary forces on Tuesday. They whisk him away in a van and arrest him. Now, Mr Khan says that these cases against him are politically motivated. The former cricketing legend was ousted as Prime Minister in April last year after he lost a no-confidence motion 
in Parliament. And since then, police have been trying to arrest him over these charges, but his supporters have continued to surround his home and block authorities from getting to him. They've been staging protests across the country. Now, Mr Khan's supporters have said that they will vow to keep protesting against this arrest. But later this year, Pakistan is due to hold elections. Mr Khan says that he wants to run for those elections, but these cases will mean that he will not be able to contest. You're watching National MTV News. Trukai Sports is next. Stay with us. They're gold nuggets. There's a flavor for everyone. The best tasting snack. Get a burst of gold nuggets. Cheese flavor. Mega wow. Chicken flavor. Mega wow. Cheese onion flavor. Mega wow. Barbecue flavor. Mega wow. When you're on the go. One more. One more. Get that burst of gold nuggets flavor. Mega wow. Number One Super wants Member Super to last as long as possible in retirement. With Number One Super's retirement savings account, you get regular payments while the balance remains invested and continues to grow, helping your super savings last longer. It's like still getting paid even when you stopped working. Number One's retirement savings account. Contact us today to find out more. This is a call out to all telecommunication organization. The Telecom Limited will be hosting the 27th Pacific Islands Telecommunications Association AGM and Business Expo Forum on Monday 29th May 2023 to test day 1st June 2023 at the Hilton Hotel Port Mosby. Team Reimagining service excellence, ubiquity, and resilience in a post-COVID Pacifica. Call our organizing team now to secure your sponsorships package on 3004010 or email events at telecom.com.pg for more information. Join us and be part of the first ever Pacific Islands Telecommunications Association AGM and Business Expo Forum in Port Moresby. Hi, I'm Chef Jules Hennell, and this is where my true inspiration for cooking started. Like most of us, I learned to cook from my mum. Nothing beats simple recipes where fresh local produce is at the heart, especially when it's a home-cooked meal, prepared and shared with the ones you love. And in PNG, no meal is complete without rice. And my choice is always True Guy. True Guy, true inspiration through generations. the SME Corporation level in accordance with the SME Act, our duty is to deliver the promise for the government MSME development. Join us Monday night at 7 as we discuss the micro, small, medium enterprise sector. The relationships between our government to government, government to business, and then our business to business relationship, business to employee relationships and how we look after each other. Join us Monday night at 7, right here on your number one to watch, MTV. In the Super W final for 2023. The Super Women's Rugby Grand Final. And we're underway. Queensland Reds versus Fiji and Drua. And now, oh, again, she's found some space. She's through the gap. Ryan Petipian Peste. Right here on your number one to watch, MTV. True Kai Sports. Welcome to True Kai Sports. General Manager for Royal Port Mosby Golf Club in a recent interview said the club is now preparing to run its Legends Tournament in a few weeks' time. Yeah, and, and it's great to have the PGA here as well. So coming this September, we actually have a PGA Legends event, so the Port Moresby Classic. So we've fi signed a three-year agreement with the PGA to bring the Legends. So the players in the Legends, uh, pre oops, 
the previous players from here. Um, so Peter Cook, Peter Senior. So it's a flow-on event from the one that's in Lay. So the PNG Seniors. So it's starting to generate the, uh, people wanting to come back here. We've got a lot of the uh, ex-players that have been here before, loving coming back to PNG. The round five of the national rugby league competition is set to witness some exciting rugby league competition in various parts of the country come this weekend. Last weekend's game saw teams go head to head to compete for the top sport. In Port Moresby, the hot favourites, despite giving their best shot in round in the round, the EMK Sipic Pride were given a run for their money by the Central Dabaris, thanks to a home crowd advantage. With a finishing scoreline of 22 points to EMK Sipic Pride 18 at full time. This weekend we'll witness round five of the National Rugby League competition with teams already preparing to challenge for the top post. Trukai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. As PNG's only ISO accredited bulk haulage operator, IPI Transport guarantees the delivery of your critical cargo. Equipped with state-of-the-art GPS tracking systems and backed by an experienced team, you can rely on IPI Transport, part of the IPI group of companies. Sick missiles is a bagara pimo pikinini anamit long five pela Christmas. Sick missiles can come up eye pass, yao pass, na come up sick long head. Karim pikinini belong you, go long house sick, cross to long you, long kissing vaccine. Dear son, you ask me how I live such a good life. Yes, I've had some good luck, like the day I met your mother. But it wasn't always that way. I've made some good choices too, like working hard and keeping my super with Nasfan. They looked after it for me, which meant I could concentrate on looking after my family. Living each day, knowing that when the time came, I'd be ready for tomorrow. Love, Dad. This May, catch all the action from the HSBC Rugby Sevens, starting this Friday. Power, presence and pace. Watch the final France Sevens men's and women's, starting Friday 12th May, 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. Saturday 13th May, 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. Sunday 14th May, 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. London's men's matches, Saturday 20th May, Sunday 21st May. Stay tuned for the 7 Series action right here on your number one to watch MTV. This is the Strike Force, and these are their stories. Eight PM tonight, right here on your number one to watch, NTV. Hi, I'm Chef Jules Hennell, and this is where my true inspiration for cooking started. Like most of us, I learned to cook from my mum. Nothing beats simple recipes where fresh local produce is at the heart, especially when it's a home cooked meal prepared and shared with the ones you love. And in PNG, no meal is complete without rice, and my choice is always True Guy. True Guy. True inspiration through generations. You're watching True Guy Sports. General Manager for Royal Port Mosby Golf Club, Josh Dixon, told MTV Sports during the PNG Golf Open Tournament that their focus is also on junior golfers in the country. 
General Manager Josh Dixon recently said that the club's focus will be on developing the next generation of top PNG golfers. Play started actually on Tuesday, so we had the Coca-Cola Junior Pro-Am. So we had 26 of our junior, uh, junior players um, play alongside 10 of the professionals um, that have come here. Great experience for the juniors to be able to uh, go out, play nine holes with the professionals, learn some tips and so on like that. He said it was great to see junior golfers last week take part in the Coca-Cola tournament. We also had the Coca-Cola uh, Pro-Am, so we had 30 teams uh, alongside 30 professionals going out. So majority of our, our sponsors that have jumped on board and, and thank you so much to all our sponsors that have uh, contributed to making this event successful. And, and he said he would like to see more young people participate in golf. But a lot of the juniors first time and, and they're amazed of the, the facility but also the generosity of the Papua New Guinean people as well. General Manager for Royal Port Mosby Golf Club, Josh Dixon, said the PNG Open Golf Tournament is a boost to the next generation of great PNG golfers. Amanda Ilaitia, Trukai Sports. Moving to overseas sports, the Melbourne Demons are regrouping to consider whether or not to appeal again the AFL Tribunal's decision regarding a player's ban. to uphold a controversial two-match ban against young four Jacob Van Ruyen for this attempted spoil on Gold Coast Charlie Ballard. The Demons had attempted to argue it was a legitimate spoil attempt and not careless conduct. Carlton's Nick Newman has escaped suspension for striking Brisbane's Lockie Neal, with the Lions co-captain submitting a letter to the tribunal in support of his opponent. Meanwhile, Geelong forward Brad Close failed to overturn a one-week ban for this dangerous tackle. Port Adelaide's Junior Rioli will front the tribunal tonight for his off-the-ball hit on Jordan Ridley. In cricket, England fast bowler Jofra Acha has returned from Cricket India's Premier League. Archer has been struggling with an elbow injury and the England and Wales Cricket Board says he needs a period of rest and rehabilitation. England's first test against Australia starts at Edgbaston on June the 16th. That ends Trukai Sports. The Money Plus weather report is next. Stay with us. True Kai Sport. True Kai Sport. Hi, I'm Chef Jules Hennel, and this is where my true inspiration for cooking started. Like most of us, I learned to cook from my mum. Nothing beats simple recipes where fresh local produce is at the heart. Especially when it's a home-cooked meal, prepared and shared with the ones you love. And in PNG, no meal is complete without rice. And my choice is always True Guy. True Guy, true inspiration through generations. PNG, enjoy Telecom's cheap home data plans. The best value data plans in PNG. There's a data plan to suit every budget. 12 gigabytes for 15 kina. 50 gigabytes for 50 kina. 80 gigabytes for 75 kina. 125 gigabytes for 100 kina. Or 200 gigabytes for an incredible 150 kina only. Subscribe now to enjoy. Applicable for ADSL, GFON, and FWB customers. Only with Telecom, the home of cheap data plans. Happy, 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 happy Mama's Day. Day! Want a quality, economical, and reliable TV for mom? Head to Brianville Home Centers for PNG's smartest, largest range of TVs, including smart models from Star Vision. Smart TVs let you stream, sync, browse and play, and they're made exclusively for Brian Bell Home Centers. We've got PNG's biggest range and best value TVs, all under the one roof, backed by our famous warranty at Brian Bell Home Centers Nationwide. Vocal Fusion Season 10, the audition tour begins. Lay City, get ready. We get to kick off the audition tour in your city on Saturday, 27th May. Mount Hagen on Saturday, 3rd June. Kokopo on Saturday, 10th June. Alatau on Saturday, 17th June. And the ending audition tour in Port Moresby on Saturday, 24th 
and Sunday 25th June. MTV's Vocal Fusion Season 10, The Audition Tour. Warm up those vocals and be ready to make your way to one of the audition centers and try out for place in the competition. See you there! On Australian Survivor, it was a new dawn as the harsh, relentless Australian outback, home to all manner of deadly species, became home to two new tribes. The an age-old rivalry. Brains versus brawn. Survivor, Thursday, 8.30 p.m. Right here on your number one to watch, MTV. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. Weather forecast for the next 24 hours. Southern region, Port Mosby and Popondetta, cloudy periods with some showers and possible thunderstorm. Daru, rain periods and possible thunderstorm. Gerima, few showers and possible thunderstorm. Alatau, rain showers at times and possible thunderstorm. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that wraps up the news, sports and weather for Wednesday, the 10th of May, 2023. From the entire news team, pleasant viewing. Good night. This news program was proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Gold Nuggets. It's my